Hello, welcome to this quick guide for selling your American Girl doll on eBay. So you have an American Girl doll and you would like to get a fair price for her. Well, eBay is one of the most well-known reseller sites in the world. And it's an excellent platform to get the price you deserve for your American Girl and offer it to a wide audience. This may not be your first time selling on eBay, or it may be your first time selling on eBay, this is, but this is definitely your first time using eBay to sell American Girl Doll. And you want to know where to start, and most importantly, what price should I sell the American Girl Doll at? Well, this guide is definitely for you. Okay, before you go ahead and jump into making a listing, there's a few considerations that you need to make in order to get the maximum fair price for your doll and order to sell your doll. Okay, first of all, the best thing that you can do to get yourself a good price, get your listing viewed, is to identify your doll. A lot of times when people are on eBay, they're searching dolls by name, or in the case of the Truly Me dolls and Just Like You dolls, they're searching for the doll by its given number, by American Girl. So it really helps to do what you can to identify your doll from the very beginning. So if you don't remember what doll it is, you've come by this doll a different way than buying it, or it's just been a really long time and you need to identify your doll, there's a couple different ways that you can find out which doll there is. Firstly, to identify your doll, you can go to the American Girl doll website. American Girl does maintain both present and past pages for the dolls that were manufactured under that brand name. Of course, if you don't have any idea which doll you have, then it's just a little harder to do it that way. Next, I suggest that you go to the American Girl Doll Wikipedia page and search you can search the dolls according to their uh, classification. There were historical dolls, truly me dolls, just like you dolls, be forever dolls. And you can get a comprehensive list of, or of all those dolls with pictures. And the picture really helps. There's also a chart called the visual truly me chart. It shows all of the truly me also known as My American Girl, also known as Just Like You, dolls from number one to number 91. And so without knowing which number they are, you can look over the chart and identify them. And if you're in between several different dolls, then click the chart and read the descriptions and look at them side by side. And that will help you choose which doll you have. You could also do a Google search, and you can also do this in the wiki too, where you can put in brown hair, blue eyes, and see a list of all of the brown hair, blue eye dolls, and try to determine from the pictures that come up which doll is the doll that you have. And finally, of course, not least, is an eBay search. You can search eBay according to the features of the doll, brown hair, blue eyes, you can search by the curly hair. You can search by skin tone type. And it will show you dolls that have been listed and what those dolls are classified as, who those dolls are classified as. Now, after you've determined which doll you have, it'll be easier for you to figure out a price range for this doll. If you have not determined who this doll is, well, as we go through the guide, there will be different steps for you to price the doll according to the doll's current condition. So here's some special considerations. First of all, if you know who this doll is, you want to know if this doll is still sold by American Girl, whether the doll is retired but widely available, whether the doll is retired and hard to find or rare. So how does this factor in? First of all, if the doll is still sold by American Girl and you are selling a used doll, then you're not going to be able to get the same prices as a brand new doll. For instance, 
if you have a Julie doll and this doll is still made by American Girl, you can't ask $120 for the doll when someone could conceivably buy that doll at the same price, completely new. So you want to keep that in mind. There have been some articles that have circulated in the media about the value of American Girl dolls. But if you read those articles carefully, you will see that it's only certain dolls made in certain years and kept in certain conditions. So every American Girl doll that's 20 years old is not worth 100 bucks. You want to keep that in mind. If you find that the doll that you have is retired, you still want to check because not all retired dolls are worth a lot of money. The two dolls you see in front of you, Samantha and Ruthie, are both retired, but the current Samantha doll on the right is not a very valuable doll because there were thousands of Samanthas made. There are thousands of Samanthas on the market in all kinds of conditions. So even though they are both retired, Samantha's just not going to uh, garner the kind of price that maybe Ruthie would in uh, good condition. Ruthie was not made as long as Samantha was. She retired before then, and so Ruthie in good condition would be worth more than just a regular Samantha in good condition. Then there's a special situation of dolls that are rare and hard to find. Take, for instance, this number four, who was first introduced in 1997 and was retired in 2012. That does seem like a long time, but for some reason, there weren't a lot of number fours sold. So that makes her rare and a little hard to find. In that case, dolls that are in that situation, although they, know, although they might not be in super condition, they are still going to command a higher price than Samantha or Ruthie would. And a rare doll at a fair condition might price much better than a common doll in excellent condition. Now, once you have given your doll a name or discovered what her number was, and you figure out whether this doll is a common doll, or a hard to find and rare doll, you want to assess the doll's physical condition. Is the doll still in a box? Hardly used? Maybe she's gently used, played with a few times, put back in the box. Maybe the doll's in play condition. She was a, a well loved doll. Might have a few marks on the body, but you can clearly see she still has years of play left. Uh, do you have the original meat outfit to go with the doll or other clothing that is AG clothing that may not be the doll's meat outfit or any other accessories that you're adding to the bundle? So you want to take this on to consideration. Dolls that come in their original boxes generally go for a little more. That's a perk people like. Of course, if the doll is not new in the box, but is in fairly good condition has been stored in the box in the original outfit that itself is much further because the outfits by themselves generally command between 15 to 20 dollars depending on how uh, intact these outfits are so the more intact the outfit is the higher price you can ask for the doll uh, and maybe you don't have the original clothing that came with her but you have some other american girl branded clothing then you want to take in consideration the, the price of the outfit. Maybe the doll is wearing a hard to find outfit. So you want to take that into consideration too. Or maybe the doll is wearing an off brand outfit, but it's really cute. So you want to price that outfit if it's going with the doll and take that on to consideration. On the flip side, your doll could be in poor condition. The Samantha on the right has had her hair cut. So that makes her less valuable than a Samantha who would have a full hairstyle. Um, is there anything that you can do to fix these conditions? The doll being naked, stained, damaged, or cut hair? If there's anything that you can do, do it now. 
I can't tell you how many listings I have seen where the doll's hair is just standing on top of their heads and the person could command a better price if they just wet a brush and gone through the doll's hair or smoothed the doll's hair or there's some dirt or things like that that could just be wiped off or scrubbed off with a little baking soda and water. Just simply wiping the body down with a damp cloth, that could increase the chances of a higher bid price. It could attract more bidders to your auction. It can increase how much bidders will be willing to pay. And they're all overall increase what you will uh, gain from the sale of this doll. So now you've done some really honest assessment. You've named your doll, if at all possible. You have saw, seen whether or not this doll was common or rare. You've assessed the condition. So now you're ready to price your doll. How do I price my doll? Well, one of the first things people always tell you to do is go into eBay, the platform itself, and search the sold listings don't just search the listings you want to see what things actually sold because people can ask all kind of prices on ebay that doesn't mean that they're going to sell so look at the ones that actually sold look at the title that was put there look at the details that was put in the title look at the description of the doll look at the pictures that show the condition of the doll and then look at the selling price and that will help you assess uh, comparatively what price you should ask for your doll. Also, you can search the current listings with bids or watchers. If you see 50 watchers on the doll and she doesn't look all that great, but you got 50 people watching her, it's probably telling you that this doll is hard to find or rare. And so if you have a doll similar, even in that condition, you could still get a good price for it. And last but not least, Compare with other selling websites, look on Macari, look on Poshmark, look on Facebook Marketplace, and do a little bit of comparison. Now it's time for you to do your listing, and hopefully you were taking notes through all this. Be as thorough as you possibly can in the listing. I have passed up listings because there just was not enough information. It said American Girl doll used as is. And it gave no more information. There was just one picture. And of course, you can always send a message to the seller. But a lot of times out of 10, you're just going to move on. So put as much information in the listing as possible. Describe the doll as best as you possibly can. Samantha, American girl, pleasant company, retired, brown hair, brown eyes, cut hair. And then go into the description and talk about what condition the torso is in. Is it a clean torso? Are the limbs clean? Are there any spots on the doll? Don't be afraid that if you describe imperfections that people won't buy your doll. I think that's what happens. I don't want to say that people try to swindle people. I think they're afraid that if they say these little nitpicky things, people will not want to buy their doll. And that's absolutely not true. People are looking for dolls with imperfections uh, it does lower the price you're going to get but also to them that becomes a great value and the last thing they want is to get a doll from you and it's not as described so just describe everything there are, there's a buyer for everything the doll has been ink spot describe it and i bet you there's a buyer for it okay uh, also talk about the skin color if you can because there are a lot of searches that are done by medium skin dolls and just be honest. Just be honest. And next, take good pictures. People are scrolling. They do see your title, but what they see immediately are pictures. More than one picture, if possible. And here are the pictures that you need to take. First of all, take a picture of the face. Full on to show the face mold. Okay. Show that the eyes open completely. Get a close-up to show the color of the eyes. I bought a doll and it said blonde hair, blue eyes. And when you zoom in on the picture, this doll was so obviously not blue eyes. 
And uh, it was just interesting. If the person had listed it, the color eyes that it was supposed to, the doll would have been worth more. It's more expensive. And I just happened to be flipping through listings and saw it. It was listed wrong. I caught it and some other people didn't. So I was able to buy it. They would have had a better audience to sell and they would have gotten more if they had been more careful with the listing. Take good pictures. There are particular things that people want to see before they buy. Okay, take pictures of the face full on to show the face mold and eyes open. Especially if you were not able to identify what doll you have. Uh, there are people who can see this doll and they will know exactly who the doll is. So even if it's misidentified, they will know. So take good pictures of that face. Make sure the eyes are open. You want to show a close-up of the color of the eye, just in case you misidentified the eye. The potential buyer can distinguish what color the eyes are actually, and they'll know whether or not it's the doll that they are looking for. Show a front picture, a back picture, and a top of the head picture to show the conditions of the hair. I once bought a doll because I knew who she was, and I did ask before I bought her, but when I got her, her hair was in a brand, took it out, and it was all bald in the back. So after that, when I see pictures, people have the hair pulled back, and there aren't pictures of the back of the head, I skip that doll. Want to be able to see the condition of the hair. Show clear pictures of the torso, which is the body, front and back, sides if you can. The tag, if the doll has a tag, and limbs to show that all the fingers and toes are there. You want to make sure people see that you don't have bit off fingers and toes. And also, if there are any marks on the vinyl, do the best you can to show those marks in the pictures. And now that you have your listing set up, when you click on the shipping, keep this in mind eBay will ask you to put in dimensions of your shipping box and your estimated weight. Weigh the doll in the box. Get the most accurate as you possibly can, or you will wind up fitting the bill for extra shipping. So you don't want to make the mistake. To get the best price for shipping, if you're going to ship USPS, use two USPS shoe boxes. They will ship those to your house for free. You cut one in half. Slide the other inside of the box that is still intact. You can raise that cut piece up and down until it's just against the doll's head. And you should be able to get the package under 20 inches. That will keep your shipping to the most reasonable cost, somewhere between $9 to $15 for a single doll. After you get that, measure that length that you have. Use the other original dimensions that are written on the box. Weigh the box with the doll and any items that may or may not go in there. That will give you the best price. I guarantee you. Once you cross out of the 20 inches range for USPS, then that's when you start paying those really large shipping prices like $20 for shipping. Keep that in mind. That way you do not underestimate shipping and wind up having to foot that bill okay now click list and list your doll ebay is going to give you price suggestions when you click list but here's a thought for you do not list your doll lower than the price you're willing to accept and if you have either the offer breast offer feature or the reserve price feature Start your listing as close as possible to that price. The best offer feature will start your best offer much lower than the price you put for the listing. You need to make that adjustment or sometimes it can automatically allow people to ex for the offer to be accepted and it's way lower than what you want. And also it just, you know, it'll automatically, it makes people feel better when they are doing these offers, that they're somewhere in the ballpark of what you're looking for. That goes doubly 
for the reserve listing. There's nothing more discouraging than seeing a doll start at $10 and then all these people are betting and they're up to $75 and reserve is still not met. Why start the doll at $10 when you know you want $100 as a reserve price? It makes more sense to start the doll closer to $100, maybe $65. And so that way people don't get tired of trying to bid up in these increments when you have this really far out number that they can't quite figure out where you are in there. So kind of watch that with reserve listings. And last but not least, best wishes on your endeavor. If your doll doesn't sell the first time, don't be discouraged. Sometimes it takes two or three tries to really get the audience that you need and the watchers that you need in order for someone to buy your doll. And it may be possible that you just need to go back and tweak a few places in your listing and then the, the doll will sell. 